one and I stand on that You and me, babe, that's black on black Like, how do we get from there, from here to there? Yes. Maybe we don't leave where we're where we That's are, right. but we That's like right. I, I say this every day. We all live somewhere. Can you make your neighborhood all of the things that it needs to be? That's right. Can you make your household. If if there's strife and drama and trauma in your very household, how are you contributing to making that heaven on earth? That's right. That's you right. You know, like I, I feel like there's a responsibility that we have that we, right. we abdicate. Because we just know, the, you know, if we pray, the Lord's going to provide, you know, like somehow there's no responsibility on us. Like today's message is freedom isn't free. There's something required of you. You just don't get up and become free just because you say it. There That's is right. actually steps that have to be taken, a plan, a route. You know, you have to know what, you know, and when you get there, how you going to eat, feed, you know, clothe That's yourself. Right. There has to be a whole kind of plan right. before freedom is gathered, right? That's right. That's taken. Right. That's yeah, that's absolutely right. And what a person's got to be very clear about also is be very careful because the horizon over there looks glorious because we ain't there. <laughs> that's why it looks glorious. Like, let me tell you about lawns, the grass since you in this plant thing. You know, they say the grass is greener on the greener. other side until mm -hmm. you have to mow it or until you... Mm -hmm. You know, a lawn could look beautiful, but when you're in it, because I have a lawn that looks beautiful, but it's full of crab grass and dandelion and all kind of weeds. It's, it's full of it. I know the deer love it. The little strawberry. It's it's a mess when I'm in it, but That's from it. afar, it looks like it's a one of them boiling green, it. beautiful lawns. That's it. That's it. That's it. So so the point here is you have to transform where your feet stand, and that horizon is for the grandchildren. That's not for us to abandon this and run over there. No, this, what we have right here, this is the inheritance. The inheritance is where our feet stand. Our job is to transform this. The grandchildren will take care of that. Mm, all right. Speaking of uh, the music that we support, and again, you know, we get what we deserve when we don't check you know i remember being a young reporter and see dolores tucker and calvin mm -hmm. butts rest in power both of them were out there in them streets bulldozing music because of the bitches and the hoes and the n-words right. they were uh whitewashing billboards in black communities that that sold back to black people liquor malt liquor and cigarettes and all of this they were they were literally painting over the billboards because of the messaging that little kids would have to walk by and they were excoriated in our community excoriated mm. held up as you know mm. out of touch but they were right that's right they were right see dolores tucker and calvin butts they were right because now we have a whole generation of people that don't even know where due north is we have right. young folk that believe in all you know they you know all of the things that they hear and see and they then perpetuate it. So Cardi B, who I think is, you know, she's, 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 she may be evolving. I don't know. I think she, she means well, I think, I don't know what's in her heart. Um, but she seems like a nice lady, um, who's, who's trying doing the best right. she can. Right. Um, and I'm gonna need her to not talk about politics because she doesn't, she doesn't know enough until she knows enough. I believe she can read and, and get educated, but right. she's out here now talk, talking to people with no knowledge. No knowledge. So I'm going to play a clip from Cardi B. I'm going to play this clip. Uh, she's talking about the New York budgets and what's happening in New York City where she lives. I'm going to play this, and then we're going to talk about it. Play it, Amina. Angry bitch right now. I'm an angry-ass bitch right now. I'm an angry bitch. Y'all need to get in here because I'm, I'm about to go off right now. Right now. Yeah, I'm about to go off right now. Come on in. Hold up. Oh, yeah, outside because usually I'll be having like 30,000 people by now, but I have 24,000. I need y'all to spread this fucking video. I need y'all to spread this video. And if something happens to me, it's because I'm speaking truth. So, God forbid something happens to me or my family or some shit, it's because it's after me because I'm speaking the truth. And here's the truth, right? In New York, there is a 120 million budget cut. There's a 120 million budget cut in New York that is going to affect schools, public libraries, and um, the police department. Y'all know I don't give a fuck about the cops, but like it is what it is. There's gonna be an 120 million dollar budget cut with schools, with the libraries, and the cops, and the police department, and a five million dollar budget cut in sanitation. 
of a budget cut in sanitation. Bitch, we're going to be drowning with rats. We're going to be drowning in fucking rats. So we are going to be having a budget cut on these shits. Mind you, and this is why I said, I'm not, this is why I'm telling y'all, I'm not this year. Don't fucking ask me. I don't give a fuck the resume that they send. I don't give a fuck. I'm not endorsing no fucking presidents no more. Because how is that a $100, $100 million budget cut in New York City for, for um, fucking schools, library, uh? police safety and sanitation yeah joe biden is talking about like yeah we could fund two wars we could fund two wars motherfuckers talking about we don't got it but we got it like we're the greatest nation no the fuck we're not we're going through some shit right now like say it say it we really going through uh, we, we, we really 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 are fucked right now oh my god okay wow i love her love her passion love it I, i'm gonna need her First of all, nothing that you said outside of the hundred, uh, it's a hundred and ten million dollar budget cut in New York City. They announced that Mayor Adams announced that uh, Thursday that there's going to be a freeze on police hiring. So it's not cut a freeze on hiring. They're closing libraries on Sundays, and they're for the first time since 1980s will be a slash of the education department budget by a billion dollars over two years. That is what was announced by the New York City mayor. How the hell did Joe Biden get into your conversation and your commentary? Joe Biden has nothing to do with what goes on in New York City, number one. Number two, so just quick civics lesson. We have three branches of government. <laughs> we have the legislative, which makes the laws and the budgets. They do the budgets, right, and all of that. And in the federal government, that is the House of Representatives and the Senate. Those two bodies work to create laws that then go to the executive branch, which is the president, to sign off or veto, right? That's the exchange. There's no budget cuts without the legislative branch. They make the cuts. They decide what's going to happen and the executive branch. So in the city of New York, you have the city council, which is basically your House of Representatives and Senate, that make, make the cuts. And then the mayor signs off or he vetoes. At the state level? It's the all assembly people right. and the, in the Senate, it's similar, legislative, the judicial branch, the judges, Supreme Court, local, federal, and, you know, state, local, and federal. It's the same kind of way. So you should be mad at Mayor Adams. Did you vote for Mayor Adams? Cardi B, I'm just, because if you didn't vote for Mayor Adams or you didn't vote in the mayoral election and you didn't get people to vote in the mayoral election, then you really can't talk about well you can you can do whatever you want you're free ish but this now you're going out misinforming your millions she's got millions of followers maybe thirty thousand at any given time on her live but you just brought biden in and say you're not voting for biden because of what's going on in new york they ain't got nothing to do with it how, how did the the folk like this i mean back in the day if you were an entertainer like a nina simone you actually read some you but i you, you would talk about things you knew. Oh my God, the the arrogance that you talk about, the arrogance. It's what, what do we do with this? This is so frustrating. You know, the one thing that really sticks out for me, Karen, you know, I think you handled the analysis so well. I don't need to say anything about that. The one thing that stick out to me about this clip is, Cardi B, who are you talking to? Who are you talking to? Ma'am, who are you talking to? I come from people, you know, we come from people, um, Ma'am, that with that kind of language, that kind of priest, I love her passion. I agree with that too. I love that part. I love that. But ma'am, whom are you addressing? Who in the world would follow you from speaking to folks that way? And we need people to follow you because you have a national platform. I'm not mad about that. In fact, I think that's a beautiful thing. But ma'am, you have to speak to people as if you assume their humanity. Mm. You're talking like you're cussing somebody out whom you don't honor and respect at all. Well, she has 169 million followers on Instagram and another 32 million could be overlap on, I believe on that. Twitter. So there's a lot of people, 169 million people follow Absolutely. her on Instagram. That's what she's talking to, calling, calling herself a bitch. Um, and again, this is not respectability politics. No. This, is, this is respect for yourself and each other and, 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 and us, right? Absolutely. So what do you say to people that say that to you, Dr. Black? Oh, you're just trying to police language. 
the, the, the thing I say to people is this, excellence is never arbitrary. You always choose excellence. That's why when folks say, well, you know, listen, you know, it don't really mean that kind of thing. It's, you know, listen, you know, it's nothing but a word. You don't know and you don't love excellence. Because the brilliance of excellence is that you must first have a choice to be a fool. You must have that choice first. Because to get to excellence, you must step over foolishness. You cannot be excellent just because you, you never had the opportunity to be anything else. No, that would not make a person excellent. Excellence is when you deny yourself the opportunity and the gains that come along with being a fool. And, we, and, and the world is full of fools. That's why there are a million proverbs about them. Because <laughs> the world is packed full of them. But I want us to choose to be excellent. And when you're talking about language even, you have to choose the words that carry your divinity. Some words won't do. Aaron Hunter. Some words won't do. And here's how you know. Why don't we use those words when we're talking to God, Karen? I think some people might be calling God the B word, and <laughs> I don't know how. I and, and called Cardi B probably like it. that. Yeah, I've okay. never, I, I've never even heard people say Jesus is my nigga. You know what I'm saying? Something like, like I've oh, never heard. God. I've heard that. I have heard that. I, I have heard that, Doctor. Now that's that's really silly and ridiculous. Here's the problem with that. The problem with that then is instead, ooh, instead of you rising to meet Christ, you bring Christ down to meet you. So now neither one of you have any divinity. And what I'm saying, the thing about language is the same with anything else. There are words you have to reject. That's how you get to excellence. The, a beautiful sentence is not a long sentence. A beautiful sentence is you knowing what words to excise, which words to take out. In other words, efficiency of language makes the most beautiful sentence. To say, I love God because God's been so good to me all my life and all I can think about is how wonderful God's been to me. That's not a beautiful sentence. That is not a beautiful sentence. It's full of a whole lot of words. But you would have done better to say, God has been a master steward of my soul. Now that's a nice sentence. You see, so in, so in other words, it's not, don't just use words because you can. No. Excise words, reject many of them because they won't carry the magnitude and the beauty and the power of who you are. 